the internet, Donna here. I thought I would speak with you all a little bit today about zinc and denture adhesive. Now, I know that a lot of you may already know all this crap, and if you do, bear with me, please. Um, but I've done a little bit of research because I see folks in the groups, in the denture support groups asking, what adhesives are you using? What adhesives should I use? Their recommendations of, oh, I use this and it's great and I use that and it's wonderful and I use, used this but it's a big piece of shit and don't use this because blah, 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 blah. With all of that community shared information flying around, it can be a real pain in the dick to navigate to the right choices. So let me just mention something here for about 10 minutes of your time, maybe a little more. Um, about your denture adhesives. Now, I know that I started off with zinc. Zinc, ah! No, zinc is a mineral that is an essential ingredient for good health. So zinc, good. Okay, it's found in protein-rich foods like shellfish, beef, chicken, and nuts, as well as in some dietary supplements. So like, if you're taking a multivitamin, it probably contains zinc. Denture adhesives, because we're talking about zinc and denture adhesives, are pastes, powders, or adhesive pads that may be placed in or on a denture to help them stay in place. Now, sometimes denture adhesives contain zinc to enhance adhesion. There's something about zinc that makes the gluey bits of your chew glue more gluey. Okay? Um, in most cases, properly fitted dentures don't need adhesive. Um, so, um, over time though, shrinkage in your bones due to resorption, um, uh, shrinkage in the bone structure in the mouth causes your dentures to gradually become loose. So when this happens, your dentures should be relined or replaced to um, make sure that they fit your mouth properly. Now, especially in cases like mine and maybe yours, if you're wearing immediate dentures too, um, it's not feasible to have your dentures replaced every single time they don't fit right. The first few months that after you get your extractions, your gums change and shrink and heal and do other weirdness at an alarmingly high rate. Um, so relines are going to be your best bet if that's your situation. For those in their permanent dentures though, or those that have had dentures for 6 to 12 months or longer, um, a reline, yeah, but you can only reline your dentures so many times before you finally need to replace them. Sorry. It's okay. I can just say that sentence again. That's why I have bullet points. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have notes. Denture adhesives fill gaps caused by shrinking bone and give temporary relief from loosening dentures. It's not intended as a long-term solution. And I know denture adhesive use runs rampant in the immediate denture community. Um, so I thought that, um, especially for me, this was something that I needed to look into. And since I was looking into it anyway, I figured I might as well share it with you fine folks. While zinc is essential to good health, too much in your system is a bad thing. Overuse of zinc containing denture adhesives, especially when combined with dietary supplements that contain zinc or other sources of zinc like shellfish, beef, chicken, nuts, like we talked about earlier, um, this can contribute to an excess of zinc in your body. Now you might be thinking, well, Donna, what's wrong with that? It's good for you, right? Zinc. It's what's for dinner. Uh, no. Too much zinc will cause nerve damage, especially in your hands and your feet, okay? Um, in extreme cases, arms and legs as well, and these effects will appear slowly over an extended period of time. It's not like you can hit, um, you know, too much zinc in a day and, you know, the, your fingertips start tingling like, whoa, I better cut back on zinc, by God. No, that's not how that works. There's actually medical literature that links overuse of zinc-containing denture adhesives to nerve damage, numbness, tingling in the extremities. The subjects of these reports, of these case reports, used at least two tubes per week. Now, mind you, the recommended use for one 2.4-ounce tube of denture adhesive paste, cream, whatever you want to call it, is seven to eight weeks. 
So think about that, at least two tubes per week. I don't even want to try to imagine how ill-fitting those dentures are. Like I've got this picture in my mind of like these ginormous dentures and this eeny meeny little little ridge inside of some little woman, little old woman's mouth where she's with her dentures and she has to fill in all the gaps with the glue just to make them stay in so she can kiss the grandkids without freaking them out. Like I just, I don't like that mental image. I, I, I want it to go away. Now, also in these case reports, one brand or type of denture adhesive was not found to be better or worse than another. So it's, it wasn't polygrip versus secure or fixident versus clutch or anything like that. Um, also, your pads like C-Bond are not any better or worse than your powders like polygrip or your your fixident uh, pastes or uh, your comfort strips or whatever it is that you're using. One type of denture adhesive containing zinc was not any better or worse than another. Now, also in these case reports, it's important to note that no conclusive evidence that you uh, was found that using the zinc containing denture adhesives as directed caused problems. So that tells me that it's okay to use the products as directed, but if you find that you're going through a tube in a week or even a tube in a month, because a month is 4.2 weeks and you're supposed to be seven to eight weeks on a tube of denture adhesive, you're using too much and you need to cut it back. Now, thankfully, the Food and Drug Administration does ask the makers of denture adhesives to do a few things. First of all, if zinc is an ingredient, they're supposed to include directions that will prevent overuse. Now, this could include things like um, a graphic showing how much to put on the denture um, or uh, a note in the instructions about how long the tube is supposed to last under regular use. Also, the FDA wants uh, makers to specify that zinc is an ingredient in on their labels and to also consider replacing zinc with another ingredient that presents less health risks if it's overused. So your secure adhesive is a good example of a zinc free product and uh, I'm not real sure what they've replaced the zinc with in order to get around that health risk but whatever it is man that stuff is like cement for the inside of your face. It, it, it goes in there and you can't pry it out with a crowbar before it's ready to come out. It's fantastic. And zinc wasn't needed to achieve that. Now the FDA does provide a little bit of advice for denture wearers uh, on this issue. Um, if you're uncertain on how much to use, say the packaging doesn't have instructions or the instructions are unclear for some reason, call your dentist your dentist or dental hygienist or any one of the assistants in the office can help you figure out how much is a proper amount. Also know that a large amount of adhesive won't address problems with ill-fitting dentures. The way to address problems with ill-fitting dentures is to do so with your dentist. Also know that prolonged use of ill-fitting dentures will lead to an increase in bone loss. And that's true. Um, I actually did a blog post at DonnaSloan.net concerning bone resorption and the causes of it and how to decrease the likelihood uh, or decrease the rate of it or what would increase the rate of it. So maybe go and check that out. And I'll try to post a video on that um, soon. The FDA also has a few recommendations for adhesive users. First of all, follow the package instructions. Use as directed. Don't use more than recommended. I mean, simple. Use as directed. Don't use in any other way. Understand that some denture adhesives have zinc. They're fine to use in moderation, but overuse leads to nerve damage. They want you to know the manufacturer doesn't always list their ingredients, and they don't. I make Bath & Body products, and if I'm making them for market. I'm not just giving them away as gifts. I am required by the FDA to list everything that I put in that product before it went into the packaging. Um, 
So if I don't and I get caught, that's a heavy fine. I could get shut down. I mean, that's terrible, uh, but I would deserve it because there are so many things that people are allergic to. It's very important, especially when you're dealing with someone's skin or something that's ingested, to have all the ingredients listed because if there's a possible allergen there or an irritant, the consumer deserves to know about that. Know that there are zinc-free alternatives, and there are, uh, even within the same brand. If you, if your granddaddy's grandpappy swore by super poly grip, and by golly, you're going to keep on that family tradition because it never failed your granddaddy's grandpappy, and I'll be damned if it's going to fail you now, I get it. Okay, use the, poly, the super poly grip, and know that there is super poly grip that contains zinc and super poly grip that does not. And it'll specify on the label. I saw this example in a, a major department store that sucks for not uh, paying their people a living wage or giving them decent benefits. Walmart, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so anyhow, I was in there snooping around and uh, saw on, on the poly grip and on fix it. And also it will be the exact same looking package. And one will say, something to the effect of maximum hold denture adhesive and the other one that looks just like it will say maximum hold zinc free denture adhesive or you can just flip it over to the back and look at the list of ingredients which isn't always reliable like i just said but it's better than just blindly grabbing some shit off the shelf and shoving it in your buggy um but look and see if zinc is listed there as an ingredient Track how much you're using. You know, when you open a new tube, mark it on your calendar, put it in your phone, whatever, and then do the same thing when you throw that tube away. If you see that you are using a tube in four weeks, in five weeks, in two weeks, in one week, bless you, I don't know how you're getting your daily nutrition because you're eating adhesive instead of food. Um, but if you find that you're using it more uh, than what is recommended on the label, if you're if the amount of time that you went through that tube is not the amount of time that's specified on the packaging, try to make adjustments. You're probably using too much. And if using less means that your dentures won't stay inside your face or stay affixed to the roof of your mouth and the, the bottom arch here of your mandible, then don't like go, go talk to your dentist. Go, please do go talk to your dentist because it's probably time for you to have a soft reline or to consider replacing your dentures. That brings me to another point. Speak to the dentist about fit issues. You know, you should not be using so much adhesive that it oozes over the sides of your dentures. If, if that action is happening, uh, when you first stick them inside your face, you are using too much. Talk to the dentist about your fit issues. They will mo more than likely um, go ahead and schedule you up for a soft reline or uh, speak with you about other things that can be done to to fix the fit, such as adjustments or even replacement. So what about you? If you're a denture wearer, what brand of adhesive are you using? Which one's your favorite? Is it a zinc-free option or are you a zinc-eating fool? I would love to know. I'd love to read and respond to every single one of your comments. So leave me a comment and let me know. If you are not a denture wearer yet, were you aware of this zinc issue thing or is this news to you? I'd love to hear about that too. So go ahead and leave me a comment. Again, love to read and respond to every single one. That is gonna be about all that I have for you today. Please check out my blog at donnasloan.net. Go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you never miss a video. And I will be back tomorrow with another video for you folks. In the meantime, be good to each other, keep smiling, and keep being awesome.